morning. Welcome, beautiful people, to worship. We are very grateful for you to be here. While we cannot be together in person, we can hear the word of God and hold each other in prayer. Let's take a deep breath together and invite the Holy Spirit to be among us. The spirit that connects us with one another and allows us to see each one of us as human being, regardless of our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life that, when it's taken away from one, affects all of us. But well, before, I have a few announcements for you. The Sunday, January 10th, will be the installation of our new council members. And also, um, January 31st at 7 is our um, annual meeting. All the information is in the bulletin for you. Please check them. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, the son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heads of your promise of servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and we know our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page six, Light Dawns on the Weary World.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, reading verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them, and bind blind and the lame, those with child and those in labour, together, a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path, in which they shall not stumble. For I, I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather them, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their lie shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Here ends our first lesson. The song for today is from 147. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a comment to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like bread crumbs. Who can stand against God's code? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Hallelujah. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, reading verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace 
that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Here ends our second lesson. We continue our service this morning with our prayer requests for this week. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. <coughs> Please pray for Bob, Al, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, Shirley, Pat, Connor and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deirdre, John and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, John, Sammy, Wayne, Jill, and finally Blake, Cassie, and family. We pray for hope, comfort, help, and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. We remember especially those who are most vulnerable to the disease, those who are caring for the sick and their families, and all of us who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptised with the mind of Christ where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We remember all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty and we ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. We pray for the drug rehabilitation work of new life for girls as they operate right across the street from us. 
We entrust the women in the program to your care, Lord, and ask that you would give them new life. We pray for our church, Lord, and for your guidance in all aspects of our ministry. For Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, our path toward meeting again in person, and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things came into being through him and without him no one thing came into being what has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it there was a man sent from God whose name was John he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of the men, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of uh, the, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon hymn is on page 10, Word of God, Come Down on Earth.
grace. Grace to you all, my friends. Have you ever been asked to introduce a speaker before any of it? If I were to ask you to introduce someone, how would you do it? What would you say? What would you focus on? How would you decide what to share? You might talk about their strength, their wit, humor, dependability. You might talk about how they have been such a good friend to you. There are other situations in which we may be asked to describe someone. Perhaps you've been asked to write a reference when someone is applying for a job. Or you introduce a friend to someone else. Those are all hopefully happy occasions. But we also try to summarize a person in the event of a bereavement. When the person has died. Whenever I prepare for a funeral or memorial service, I have a number of questions I'll ask the family or friends, even when I know the person pretty well. The person hobbies, work life, family members, unforgettable memories, the early years where they were born, grew up, went to school, things like that, we know more about who the person was. John in his gospel introduces Jesus in a very different way than the other evangelists do. Unlike Matthew and Luke, there is no birth story in John's gospel. Unlike Mark, John does not begin with an explanation of the ministry of John the Baptist. Instead, John Pollard goes way back where it all started. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning. Ancient tradition holds that John the Evangelist wrote his gospel from a place called Ephesus, near the end of the first century. The temple in Jerusalem had probably already been destroyed by the time he wrote and the Jews had been dispersed, leaving Jerusalem behind as they resettled in other cities. At the time John wrote his account, part of his audience consisted of the Jews who had been scattered throughout the provinces, deprived of a location they could call their spiritual home. But John was also writing for Greeks who had been converted to the Jewish, Jewish faith. Let's take a look at the beginning of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him no one thing came into being. What has come into being in, his, in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. John presents Jesus, Israel Messiah, using the Greek term logos, which means word, as the source of light and life that make us the children of God. The word word here has a very distinct meaning. The word is God utterance, and that means creation from God's point of view. God's word, unlike human words, is always creative and powerful. Genesis tells us that God spoke creation into being. Let there be light, and there was light. John says, all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. It was by the word of the Lord that all things were made. As God spoke, the word made them, brought them into being. How powerful this word is. Life and light are in him. The light of the word shines. 
Then John shifts our, shifts our focus from the word. He tells us about this man sent by God whose name was John. Not the writer of the gospel, but John the Baptist. Now, why does he do that? Well, look at what he says about this John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. What does that mean to testify? Well, that's a courtroom word. Have you ever been called to testify? A witness tells the court what they have heard and seen. No speculation, no surmising, just the facts. So imagine you saw a car accident on your way to the grocery store. You would be asked what you actually saw, not how you think it happened. Your evidence would be used to bring a verdict, a decision. John the Baptist, as an expert witness, testifies so that all might believe through him. John was bearing witness to what he himself had seen and heard. He knew that guy. And he, and he recognized that Jesus was more than just a body to hang out with. He was God. And he was God from before the beginning before the creation of the world. John's point is that God has revealed God's self in one very like us, and yet not like us at all. The light has broken into the world full of grace and truth, and we have beheld his glory. It's true we sometimes struggle with deciding on a verdict, no matter how much evidence we are given. But this word is full of promise. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Believing in God's name gives the power within, not power over but power within. The confidence that God dwells among us through Christ, the confidence that God comes to share our humanity with us, the confidence that Christ makes us children of God too. The confidence that the story of the incarnation is not something that ceases to be after Christmas. It is a continuing story. The incarnation never stops. God never stops sharing our humanity in Christ with us. The word never stops being present and participating in the creation of all things. John's instruction or introduction reminds us that Jesus' existence did not begin when he was born in Bethlehem. His existence has always been and will always be. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us pray as Jesus taught us wherever we are. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, send the shepherds with good news, and let the Magi by a star. Bless you this day, through the word made flesh. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 11 in the bleak midwinter. peace my friend be safe share the gift of Jesus to one another thanks be to God